My name is Lila Webb, and I'm really excited to share my research on bi-plus identities in research, a literature review. My supervisor for this project was Dr. Susan Boone. We were funded for this by the Program for Undergraduate Research Experience. Just so you know, in this study, we'll be using bi-plus as an umbrella term to capture any sexual identity that identifies as attracted to more than one gender. This could include bisexual, pansexual, queer, etc. So relevance, 5.5% of Americans identify as bi-plus. This is a huge community of 18 million people in America alone who identify under this umbrella term, also representing over half of the LGBTQ plus community. Because this community is so big, we would assume that there's research on them. But unfortunately, a lot of the times, bi plus individuals are homogenized into gay or straight categories based off of the gender of their partner or just for convenience sake of the research. This is a huge disservice to the community because we know that bi plus individuals uh, encounter unique stressors, unique experiences that cannot be captured in studies that homogenize them into other identity groups. So going into this project, we were asking, what is the current state of research on bi plus uh, individuals and experiences? And what gaps exist in the current literature on bi plus individuals and experiences? To assess this, we did a literature review, and we found three different trends in bi-plus research. The three trends were bi-negativity, bi-visibility, and bi-positivity. Let's go through these. So bi-negativity had the most published on it. Bi-negativity understands that bi-plus individuals are more likely to suffer worse mental health on average than any other sexual orientation group. This is surprising given the size of the community. So lots of research has tried to understand why this is. There's been lots of research on the stigmas and stereotypes that confront bi-plus uh, individuals and communities. Uh, the most common of them being that bi-plus is not a real identity. We see this one quite frequently throughout research and it's very invisibilizing towards bi-plus groups. Uh, this is actually contributing to a phenomenon called bi-erasure, wherein uh, people either don't believe that bi-plus is a real group or they assume the sexual orientation of a bi plus person based on the gender of their partner or on their outward presentation. This can be very invalidating towards bi plus people and can help contribute to that negative mental health that we see in the group. Help, to help explain how this connects to the actual negative mental health, the model most frequently used is minority stress theory. Minority stress theory postulates that the more exposure you have to uh, negative stigma, stereotypes, um, and experiences towards your identity, the more likely you are to internalize these experiences and to start to view yourself negatively. This can contribute to negative mental health. So this is the model that we most often see used in the research. This leads to bi-visibility. Bi-visibility is any intentional effort that bi-plus people might use to try to make their identity visible in the face of that erasure phenomenon I was just speaking about. Bi-visibility can be both good and bad, kind of depending on how it's received. Um, we know from general queer studies that uh, being able to live authentically and in a positive environment um, supports your identity affirmation, your experience with relationships, and your personal validation. But we also know that bi plus individuals experience unique responses to their identities, namely that people don't believe they're real. Um, and this can lead to stigma and isolation when they try to make their identities more apparent. The third trend that we were finding is bi-positivity. Bi-positivity is any positive experience that has to do with bi-plus identities. We don't know much about this. There has not been much published on it, but we know that they're protective factors for mental health. They can facilitate personal growth and curate a sense of community, belonging, visibility, normalization, and acceptance. We also know that they're most likely to occur interpersonally, and especially when the person you're interacting with is another bi-plus person. But this is really all we know on this topic. The gaps in the research and some possible future directions for research include bi-positivity. So this is a growing trend um, and it definitely needs more research to be done on it. It's important that in psychology and sociology, we're validating and trying to explore ways that we can support communities and identities. Um, bi-positivity is a great way to do this and it, there needs to be more understanding in the research and in common culture about how we can use bi-positivity to help uplift bi-plus individuals. We also need to know more about the motivations behind bi-plus uh, positivity attempts. There's not much that's been found about the underlying factors and reasons why people do bi-visibility, especially given the negative reaction that can sometimes be given to this phenomenon. The last thing that should be that we identified uh, is that we should know more about the perceptions of bi-plus identities and all the factors we were just talking about from non-bi-plus observers to understand the stigmas more. These are my references. Thank you for listening.